Disability is not inability. Persons with disabilities are also endowed with God-given talents and when put into ample use can result to something extraordinary. 39-year-old Eugene Kimbi, also known as Omo Eugene, hails from Dunga Mantung Division, Northwest region of Cameroon. A graduate from the Bulu Blind Center Boya, Omo Eugene has carved a niche for himself the production of powder soap. Okay. I was born in 1976. Okay. 1976. And my name is Kimbi Eugene. So tell me, uh, were you born blind? How, how was it when you were born and how were you raised? Well, I was born, it was in the age of 10 that I encountered blindness by result in front of headache. Okay, so how, how were you raised, your parents and the others? Yeah, I'm, the, I'm sorry to tell you, my mother did not even know her. It is my father that I knew her at the age of 14 before my father died. Okay. So how have you been living from then until now? Mm, from then until now, it was not easy to me. Because you know, as a blind and an orphan, it takes the grace of God. So that time later that my father died, life was not easy to me. I even threatened to commit suicide because life was very tough. So how did it come that you started the business of doing production? Yeah, before I come to the business production, my first vision when I was in the village, I used to go to the forest and fish wood. <laughs> if they ask me that how can a blind man go to the forest and fish wood, mm -hmm. I will not know what to tell you, it is only God alone. Because sometimes I take a bundle to the market, I sell it for a hundred pounds, sometimes seventy-five. By the end of almost close to three years before, I was able to raise 6,000 francs. Hmm. Then later I went to a child to me, to consult my eye. And later the doctor told me that there is no way. It was not easy to me. Then in, 19, in 1995, I came down to the southwest. I went to a kata. I struggled by the grace of God. I walked again. In five months, I raised close to 50,000. I went to Jano Hospital in Yaoundé. So as I went there, they told me that the situation, the condition is bad, that they cannot open my eye. I spent two nights in Bamayo. I lost appetite. I ate just about 200 francs. I was already homeless. Mm. I'm sorry to hear that kind of pathetic situation. So how did it begin that you started doing the business of producing powder soap? Yeah, before I entered to powder soap, after I went to Mamayo and they told me that my eye are already destroyed, I can, they cannot operate it. So somebody directed me to Buru Blind. I went to Buru Blind. I started with craft work, basket and food mat. And I, I did food mat and basket for almost seven years. Then later in 2008, before I have a new vision to enter for Omo. Wow, so it's great that you have started a business producing Omo. For how long have you been doing the Omo business? I don't. I started in, in 2008, in, in February. You know the crisis, the hunger uh, crisis that happened yes. with the youth. That is the moment that I start this Omo. Okay, and what does it take to produce this Omo? Um, this omo like this, it have caustic soda, it have kernel oil, it have uh, salt and foaming agent, and uh, soda ash. Hmm. That is the chemical that I use to produce it. So where do you get the raw materials? Uh, the raw material I travel to Dwara. I always go to Dwara and buy them. They pay the kernel oil. But with the caustic, the, the, the caustic is, is everywhere. Even in Buya, they sell it in the, in the building material shop. Even in Mayupa, they sell in the building material shop. But the Kenyan oil, I always travel to Douala because they, they have people that they produce the oil. Okay. But around here, they are, they are hotel. But the okay. big buyer like me, I always travel to Douala. <laughs> so you are a big buyer, you travel to Douala? Yeah. You travel alone to Douala? No, I travel alone. You have no difficulties? No, no difficulties. With your money, you no. there is no history that money was taken from you? No, it was only my phone that 
It was only my phone that they snatched my phone. Okay. Yeah. They so, seized my phone and run away with it. So tell me just very briefly how is the process of you coming up with this powder soap? And the process of this uh, powder soap, it has step one. The first step you you measure water. All all the measurement will have the cup that you will, will use. So you measure six liters of water. Then later you measure one uh, cup of caustic. And that one cup of caustic it go with six uh, liters of water. Then when you dilute it, you have to give one night. You have to spend one night. Okay. Then the following day, you bring the oil. You have container one and container two. So the first one, you first fill the oil. You measure the oil. Four liter. Four liter is going with uh, one kilo. Yeah. Then later on, you start to be putting the caustic, the liquid caustic. We now begin the production of the powder soap. So you see this is a uh, kernel oil. Kernel oil. Yes. You measure how many cups? Four. Okay. I always say prayer before I start. Okay. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this blessing day. We thank you, Jehovah God, for the vision that you gave to me. Thank you for God and to work and to see what I've been doing. Mighty full Father, thank you, Lord, that may you feel me now. May you give me the grace to produce this woman because I cannot do nothing without you. He said that whatever your children lay their hand will always bless their level. Mighty full God, I surrender to you. That fill me now, Lord, and give me the strength and the nourish and wisdom. Without wisdom, Father, we can't do nothing. Thank you, Job of God. I accept me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. I'm bringing the caustic, diluted caustic with the oil together now. Okay. About to put now. This is okay. What quantity will you put inside? I have to put two of this one. Okay. So you are cleaning to get everything? Yes. I'm getting everything out.
then the water, oh, there's more water there. Okay, there's more water. Yes. How do you know there's water? No, I feel it. <laughs> I knew. So what's the next step now? The next step now is to shift that it. Okay. To put it in the shift. Yeah, shift that is behind you instead. Behind? Yes, behind. Yes. Okay, to your right. Okay. To your right. I think some group is Globes. Yes. Okay. It's to your to your left. Why why do you put on the gloves? Yeah, you know the the chemical is so powerful. Okay. Because you know Omo is meant for washing dresses. Yes. So the mixture of Omo is different with the one of savon, bathing soap, and you can name them. Okay, okay. So this one protects your hands? Yeah, it protects my hands. The powder soup in its hard original form is now ready after 5 hours and we are now ready to continue production. Wow! This is simply amazing. Yeah. <laughs> simply amazing. Ready. He's taking the chunks yes. and uh, sifting it. I'm yeah. just wondering what is going to, to come out after that. And I really want to find out from you. Uh, are you going to dry it no, for a while? No, no, you no. Just package it like uh, that. Just package it like that. Like that one you saw in the store. That's yes. just a like package. Okay. Doesn't put in this. Okay. 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 And it's very very fresh when you do it like that. Yeah, it's very fresh. Does man. it have something like an expiry period? A mm. time when it will not be very good again, very effective? No, when it stays for long like that, you will become very nourishment. Because the okay. idea it, 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 it's getting dry. Yeah. The okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm gonna get some packets uh, that you use in packaging them yeah. and they will try to, to get a few explanations again from you. Okay. But I can see some of the uh, fine particles inside. It looks very good. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> As the production continued, we were fortunate to have a customer pass by. Wow, so this is the powder soup? Yeah, this is the powder soup. It's fine, fine yeah. grains. Yes. So what are you going to do next? Next is only to pass it. Okay. So do you have some papers to pass through here? Yes. I have to okay.
no ball. Thank you. So the way you measure, you are sure that all of them are the same quantity? Yes, yes, the same quantity. So I feel it well. That's why sometimes when I go to the market, my customer will say that I will do that. Do them that I have the measurement. Even though they you have never it. reduced? No, I have never reduced. Even though it's a high quality, I also put the quantity also. Because I know black man is that. <laughs> I remember sometimes when I went to present it to to the bishop of Buyadaresis. And when I went there and the security man asked me that boy, come from where? Because I've been seeing you with basket, mm -hmm. some then I saw your food man, now you are doing father so I told him that I come from home. Oh wait, later I, I came again to regret. Mm. Because I knew Babuun people like that. <laughs> they can produce a uh, Arata bomb. Okay. That rat is even eating, you look the rat is getting fresh. <laughs> <laughs> They make polish. That when you polish your shoe, your shoe doesn't look good. Before later, I told the security man that I, that I produce quality and not like those people that just make for money. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Because by then they can escape and go to Nkuma. Mm. But you I and stand in one place. So it is not every time that somebody will pity me. So I do my best. Oh, so you don't start the business now, fine. No, already. Okay. I want to Omo. Okay. You don't be, you don't be ready. Yeah, yeah. take a. You are. Don't open market. Yeah, now I take two. Okay. Ah. You don't purify the omo. Now you don't shine now, so tea. No, really. No I, I, and you get weight. Yes. You know that the other first one will be, will be buying the other time. You know, say where they walk over some, they walk something and they get the skill, so they improve them. Okay. So, and now they walk up and be, be fine. Yeah. They shine close and fine. They move stain them for close. They get difference with other omo. Yes, they get different. But they work fine? Yes, they work fine. So, Mr. Eugene, we'll continue. Uh, how do you market your product? In fact, it is the grace of God. <laughs> to produce is very easy. But they say it is not easy. It takes the grace of God. And I want to thank uh, one of my friends, Mr. Mento. He's a teacher in Somerset. He man has been helping me a lot. Sometimes you go meeting with a student and you told them that you have one of your visual impairment. That I always struggle to bring out a car with father so that you want that I should bring the home lady, lady promote me. And uh, he had linked me with almost three schools. Somerset, uh, Show Foundation and uh, Cambridge in Mintengene. Uh -huh. This man had done a wonderful thing to me. But this year alone, this man had helped me and uh, I market almost close to 1,500 sachets. 1,500 sachets? Yes. Wonderful. So, uh, is that your only market or there are other markets? That no, you go to? so I go to the market. You know, sometimes I go door to door, like even in BHS there, I always thank God for Reverend Dr. Mukake. Sometimes when I met him, he always buy from 2000. Reverend Joe Barry Nelson, he always buy. Reverend Daly somewhere, he always buy. Where he was still a former field pastor. As he came back, I went. That day, that was mail like that. He bought for a thousand. Mm -hmm. So I go to the market and I go door to door. Sometimes I contact uh, some pastor and uh, they are baptizing in the church. They present in the church. Okay. And have the churches been helping? Huh? Very difficult, especially with the Baptist churches. <laughs> it took the grace of God. When Reverend Dr. Mankake was in my sustain, it was very easy. Okay. Yeah. Because when he called me that I should bring home, if I take even 200 sections, they will buy everything. Mm. But in, either, in any other church or Baptist, it is not easy. So, uh, when you go to church like that and you, you say, at times, do you gain or you make a loss at times? Oh, sometimes you go, you don't even say nothing. <laughs> you have to pay your transport. I remember one day I go to I go to Gilead Baptist Church. That day they was having ordination service of the former field pastor, that is Reverend Gang. So I went there like that, they did not bought anything. So I had to transport myself back with the products. Nobody gave you anything? No, uh, later on I questioned the appointed deacon. I said I cannot go like this. <laughs> so he went and looked at 2,000 francs and gave me. <laughs> So, um, are you still alone? Do you have a family that takes care? Are you married? Do you still uh, bit about your extra life? Okay. Not yet, not yet. Okay. 
and uh, you hope that there are people out there who can support you. Yeah. What appeal are you making? I'm making the people to support me with this my business by buying because it is very good. If you see somebody is doing something, it's always good to promote it. Than to because if they don't buy, among all handicapped people, the blind people face difficulty. So if you go across a blind man that is struggling to produce something, the best way that I can help you is to promote to promote it. Okay. I hear that you also assist in schools to do practicals, is that true? You are right. In 2000, 2010, I was surprised by a phone call by one of my friends, Mr. Justin Bailey. Okay. It was wonderful. <laughs> that is my first experience. I they... told him that how can I come and be talking to a father because he knows Bishop Rogan considered as a, min, uh, a minor seminary. Se seminary. So he told me that Eugene come, he's a practical. So I went there, it was wonderful. Before I went there around my most, they come and welcome me. They, they send a car to come and pick me. So it was really wonderful. And for the two days that I spent, the students they really appreciated. So Later in 2018, I was in... 2013? Yes, 2018, I was in, in, in GBHS. Okay. In Yoka. The GM also come and take me without even appealing to me. Mm. Eugene Kimbi remains very creative and although visually impaired, takes proper care of himself. Some persons with disabilities think begging always is the answer, but Omo Eugene thinks otherwise. Hard work pays. It pays indeed.